hello everybody welcome to my channel today i'm going to show you how to do this piccoli art on a wooden tray this is completely hand painted uh, i wanted to walk you through what i did during this uh, process the do's and don'ts what mistakes i made basically share my experience Let's talk about materials first. I have provided a detailed list of materials that I used on the description. I am using this unfinished wooden board that I got from Amazon for this project. And I will be using two types of brushes, the big brush for doing the background, which is the black background, and the smaller ones for more detailed work. For the background itself, I'm using the black gesso, which I'll be giving multiple coatings of and completing the entire tray with it. For the painting, I'm using acrylic colors. The bottle colors are much better than the tube paints because you will need a lot of paint. So I recommend using bottle paints uh, and the consistency is also free flowing. And other materials that I'm using are this mandala tools. Uh, we have different kinds of dot sizes and this tool is very useful. Again, link is in the bio and I'm using the big ones and the small ones for different types of dots. And I'm using this white marker pen and the black oil based marker pens for detailed work. Now let's get started with the painting. So I'm going to do the background completely black because always Tickly Art has a black background. And I started doing the gesso. I did multiple layers of gesso for the entire tray. Then I found out that when I was doing the yellow border, the yellow was not showing up properly and I had to really give four or five layers of yellow before I was able to completely get a solid finish. For the yellow so maybe in the future if i'm redoing this i would first do the yellow borders and then fill in the blacks wherever necessary i have different colored oil based marker pens so here i'm using a red pen to do some squiggly lines on the border and that's a very typical feature of tickly art they have a lot of squiggly lines on it Many Indian folk art, if you notice, there are a lot of borders involved and the more in-depth border that you make, the better your art looks. So I'm just adding some layered borders for this artwork. Let's start painting the main characters of this uh, artwork. This is what I'm going for here is Danuchi Notch of West Bengal. So I'm, I created a man playing the drums and I sketched out his image using the white marker pen that I showed initially. And then now I am filling the skin to skin or the body with the yellow color. Tikuli art always goes with a yellow skin tone uh, instead of uh, uh, our regular skin tone i believe that's because yellow stands out with the black background so that's why um, traditionally they have been using yellow so i'm going with yellow here again as you notice the yellow i had to give multiple layers to make it look more solid let me talk a bit about the danuchi notch itself that i'm creating that uh, dance form is a traditional dance that is danced in bengal during durga puja and that is navaratri and we see the women carrying fire uh, pots and then dancing with the fire pots in their hands it's a very beautiful sight uh, traditional folk art and folk dance and it's wonderful to see and, and i'm trying to capture the essence of that dance in this tray i am going with the red and white color for the saris that i'm trying to draw for the main uh, dancers because that's typically the what the costume that they wear for this dance Let's talk about how the details are done on Tikuli art. It's primarily squiggly lines and dots. The dots indicate the bindi that women keep on the forehead and it's a very uh, powerful symbolic representation of women empowerment. So that's what uh, the Biharis uh, feel when they do this artwork with a lot of dots. Um, the more dots you add, the better the artwork is. Now that the artwork is complete, I want to protect the artwork. So I'm going to put raisin in the center and use varnish for the sides. 
The reason for using resin for the center is it would uh, seal into a liquid glass and this is the resin that I am using and there is a hardener. It's a one is to one resin and hardener com uh, combination that I'm going to use. Uh, it comes with its own uh, measuring cups and uh, one for hardener, one for uh, the resin. And for a tray this size, I am going to use about 100 ml of uh, a resin. And another, once this is measured out, then I also measure 100 ml of the hardener. So it's a one is to one combination. So I'm going to take the hardener and then measure out the same amount. So I go with resin for protecting my artwork because that uh, seals into a liquid glass and that is that protects the artwork and any spillage or anything does not damage the artwork now let's take a plastic cup and mix this uh, resin and hardener uh, i typically use a wooden uh, uh, spoon to just get out all the final drop of both the hardener and the resin now stir the mixture for about 10 to 15 minutes uh, make sure that there are no air bubbles if there are air bubbles you gently pop them out there would be tiny tiny air bubbles which are okay because when it dries it actually you know goes away uh, but the bigger ones just stay so it's good to just get rid of them while you are mixing it I wanted to mention that I'm using a clear plastic cup because I want to make sure that after I stir the liquid looks very clear. Uh, if it is not, then it's not going to be a clear finish on your tray. So that's important, something to keep in mind. The more you stir, the clearer the uh, raisin mixture should get. Now let's pour the mixed raisin mixture on the tray. Try to get as much surface area as you can while you pour, like I'm doing right now. Now let's gently rotate the tray so the raisin mixture can flow into all the four corners and we have a uniform finish. It's looking beautiful already. I don't know if you're able to see it on the camera, but you know, in person, it's looking lovely after it's spread throughout the tray. Gives it such a nice finish, and I feel like the painting, the colors of acrylic colors also just brightens up after the pour. Now you just need to be careful to ensure that there are no lingering air bubbles. I don't see too many, uh, but it's always good to be careful and then using a toothpick, you can just slowly pop out any that you find are very visible. The tiny ones you just don't have to worry about, they just happen to be there and then once uh, you let the tray dry it just you know goes away so that's all good so this is after 24 hours so as i said you don't see any of the lingering air bubbles it has a beautiful beautiful finish uh, very professional finish uh, after the race and pour and thank you so much for watching this uh, video please remember to subscribe and hit the like button thank you